guys, this is a long plane review for International Karate Plus, or IK Plus as it's commonly known, for the Amstrad CPC. Uh, this was released for the Amstrad around March of 1988 by System Free, several months after the uh, C64 version, which arrived in October of 1987. Now this is an excellent 1v1 fighting game, but with a difference. There's now a third fighter. So, uh, 1v1v1 fighter? Maybe. It also has a huge range of moves available, all done by the use of one fire button on a joystick. And it actually works uh, really well. So this is a sequel to International Karate, designed by Archer McLean and released in 1985, which is a simple 1v1 fighting combat game. Two opponents, each trying to land a hit on the other. When a hit is landed, the combat stops, the fighters return to their starting positions and then carry on. And you've got to work your way up to Black Belt. And it's pretty much exactly like Weight of the Exploding Fist released the same year. Except you get to fight all around the world with different backdrops. Oh, and before we kick off the game, check out the budget re-release artwork from Hit Squad, which has a very obvious Steven Seagal and quite possibly Chuck Norris in the corner there on the cover. Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, two years later, IK Plus drops for the uh, Commodore 64, also by Archer McLean. Uh, gone are the different world locations. Instead, a really nice animated oriental backdrop and now three fighters on the screen, which you'll see now. There we go. No loading screen there on the Amstrad version. Anyway, um, also there's none of this resetting to starting positions after getting hit. Instead, you get laid out on the floor, gather your strength, get back up and continue fighting. And, uh, well, System 3 were very keen in their advertising to stress this isn't a sequel but a whole new game. In fact, there were adverts with a fist punching and the text, call it a sequel and you'll land up flat on your back. But let's be clear guys, this is a sequel, or at least a very much enhanced version of the original game, but it does stand alone from it. Uh, combat is much freer, faster and exciting, um, and you can get knocked out and hit game over within seconds if you're not careful. Okay, about to kick things off, there we go. So, it's the first of six hits in 30 second rounds. The winner moves through, as does the fighter in second place, but third place is out. And uh, we're going to play until we get Black Belt, but apparently, uh, as I later found out, the difficulty slightly increases up to round 25. So if you guys want me to do another long play another time, getting up to round 25, I can do, if you really, really want me to, but there we go. Uh, I'm doing well here. I'm the player in the white, and the computer controls the other two opponents in red and purple. And I've got six hits there. And I can now move on to the next round. But between every two rounds, there's a bonus round where you're deflecting balls for 100 points each. Um, it's probably, if you want to level up your belt, which you can see in the uh, top right corner there, I'm a yellow belt at the moment. It's all done by points. So if you want to level up quicker, you want to go through these ball bouncing rounds and deflect all the balls to get an extra bonus at the end. I think 50,000 points gets us into Black Belt. So we're going to hit 50,000 points, so we're going to try and deflect all the balls as, we, as, as much as we can. And this uh, took many attempts and runs to get through and uh, beat these bonus rounds and stuff. These bonus rounds, though, do go on for far too long, and it does make the game sort of drag. You want to get back to the action and the combat. This isn't as fun as the main game and it lasts far longer than the actual combat. This can go on for maybe a couple of minutes whereas um, a, uh, a round will only last 30 seconds in combat. So you may want to uh, avoid doing this bonus round, just get hit by the first ball and move back into the action if you so wish, but it does make the game drag a bit. Anyway, so uh, two players can join in the carnage too, with the control, the, with the uh, computer still controlling the third fighter. But you can gang up on the computer uh, player if you want to, and get both of you round through to the next round because it's the top two players that go through, and the third one is out. And we saw the move list earlier; it's up to 17 different moves can be performed. Oh, there we go, survival bonus of 2,000 points. So yeah, 17 different moves can be performed, and you can make combos in a smooth, flowing fight sequence if you're clever. 
You may see me do that in a bit. And uh, I'm just being a little bit cautious and attacking from range. We've got to be careful here. I'm in third place potentially. <sighs> Ooh, just snuck through there in second place. White stays in, says the referee that appears. Um, now some versions um, uh, change up the deflecting ball um, mini game to a, um, I think it's like we have to kick bombs and stuff, but that's missing on the Amsterdam version. Also missing on the Amsterdam version is some Easter eggs where you can make all three fighters trousers fall down rather comically and things that appear in the background like a spider, a fish jumping out the water, apparently you can get Pac-Man appearing and every now and again a submarine periscope uh, in the harbour's water will appear. <laughs> But as we saw guys, one of the main thing about this game is the animation is like truly excellent and really comes into its own in the uh, combat section, not the ball deflecting sequence, but I love the uh, use of colours there in the background and on the fighters. Really, really colourful game and it's so nicely done. Um, so the this was apparently programmed by a guy called Dan Mycheck. I'm not 100% sure that is correct or where that info comes from, but he definitely did the ZX Spectrum version, which actually confirms that on the loading screen of the Specky one, although we don't have a loading screen on the Amstrad one. And it would probably make sense um, that Dan did the Amstrad version too, seeing as they share the same Z80 code and play pretty much identically. Other games by Dan Mychek, apparently he worked on Howard the Duck conversion, oh dear. Um, and I'm not sure if he also did the graphics here or not. Possibly? Possibly? No uh, graphics artists listed for the Specky version either, so... Hmm. Uh, but music and sound effects by the always excellent Rob Hubbard. And there we go. Um, so let's talk about the other versions very quickly. Um, the C64 version was the original Target version. Uh, this came out in October of 87, according to the also, again, ever reliable Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, gameplay is the same as the CPC, but I would probably argue for once that the Commodore 64 version has better graphics. It's just got some nicer shading on the background stuff. Um, it also has some really awesome sound effects. Uh, with what sounds like digitized sounds of kicks and digitized speech of args when hit, that really just elevates it even higher. Um, but and the Commodore 64 version was released in the US with a different name, with the odd sounding Chop and Drop, which is pretty crap. I don't know why they changed the name. I know there was some legal dispute over the original International Karate, with uh, I think Day Therese getting upset that it was too similar to uh, Karate Champ, um, which eventually got overturned. But hmm. Uh, I think that was got over. I think that got overturned in the courts after this game was released, so maybe that's why it had a different name in the US. Anyway, uh, ZX Spectrum version, very similar to the uh, CPC version, and very clever use of colours for the background, given the limitations of the machine. Um, fighters' um, colours are white, black, and a stippled grey, so they do stand out from each other. Um, same music as the CPC version, but arguably probably the weakest version um, due to the lack of colours generally, which seems really mean, because actually the graphics and colours are really good on the Specky, but it's the weakest only by a whisker. Um, the Amiga version is the best version, with some nice extra presentation. It also then appeared on the Amiga CD32, uh, which is absolutely identical to the Amiga, so it seems kind of pointless they did that. Uh, the Atari ST, same as the Amiga, but with a slightly smaller plane area, and but not as good sound effects and music. And this later got uh, ported um, to the Game Boy Advance, PlayStation and Virtual Console. So there you go. Oh, we're on brown belt here, so we're very close to getting black belt. 50,000 points. Um, and I was... I can't believe I actually beat three of these bouncing ball rounds. This was a tough run to do. Review scores at the time. I might have to get interrupted when we hit Black Belt here, but Abstraction Magazine reviewed this in issue 30, which was March of 1988. They weren't overly keen on the game. 
stating that combat games, or as we know them now, 1v1 fighting games. Oh, wait, this is a 1v1v1. Oh, hang on. Do we get black belt here? Yes, we got black belts. There we go, guys. So essentially, I've achieved my long play. Well, we're not doing to level uh, round 25 here. I can do that another time. But we're talking about the Amstrad Action Review, which says, which complains that combat games were a clapped out concept with them getting more and more boring, but companies keep on churning them out. <laughs> and this is three years before Street Fighter 2 got released. And as I'm talking now, Mortal Kombat 11 has just been released and is massively popular. So uh, the reviewers seem to be seem to be like having a bad day or having a bad mood on writing that review. Especially with giving the Sonics 58%, noting that the tune is not exactly the best piece of music that's ever been programmed. Well, I, I, that is true, I guess, but he sounds particularly down on it, strangely. Uh, music's really, really good here. It's Rob Hubbard, for God's sakes. Um, graphics got 84%, grab factor 71%, staying power 59%, and finally an overall rating of 68%, which is pretty harsh, yikes. Just shows how reviewers can be so far off what the public actually likes sometimes. I mean, this is a well-loved cool classic across all the systems. And as for my review score, guys, I'm going to give this, like, it would probably be like an 88 or 89% from me. Maybe just missing out on the 9 out of 10 score. So 8.5 out of 10 from me. Because I think the game needed a bit more. And the ball bouncing sections between every two rounds just really drag on and s slow down the action. It gets really tedious. Um, and also, it can be game over ridiculously uh, quickly, which we've just <laughs> had happen there. Because you can get knocked on the floor and the two, the two computer fighters can be duking it out and actually get all their six hits really quickly before you can even get up sometimes. So it could be a really tough beat in this. But there we go guys, an eight and a half out of 10 from me. It would have been about an 88, 89%. And also it's a rather cramped playing area as well. And it's moved so fast, it's hard to use the blocking defensive jump moves. Right, I just wanted to show you here guys, the best move in the game, the double face kick. If you can pull that off, that's amazing. I love that. And if we hit the escape key, we go on the pause sequence, which has all the fighters doing all the moves there. And really, really cool pause um, sequence. Yeah. So there we go, guys. That was International Karate Plus or IK Plus for the Amstrad CPC. Thanks for watching. And yeah, eight and a half out of ten from me. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.